Hello, YouTubers, Fairly to you, and welcome to the 12th stage of the MLC Walter Espana. Once again, I'm joined with uh, Handsball. How are you doing? Hello. I almost said baseball over there. It's just a habit, <laughs> but it's Handsball. So, for this stage, you won't be able to see my viewpoint, but as the color commentator, which you did such an amazing job, in the, at least in the comment section, I saw you did a great job. So, I thought about bringing you back, but this time you won't be able to see my point of view, but as a color commentator, it's not as important. But I can tell you, the stage is pancake flat. So, which of the sprinters would you look out for in this stage? Um, if Giddle survived the hills until now, certainly he is one of the favorites because he was so dominant in the sprint stages. But, of course, some of the GC guys will start sprinting now, if I'm right. Yeah, some of them can do something like that. Valverde was one of the favorites before in the sprints, we saw that before. Uh, Joaquin Rodriguez has done it in the MLC Tour de France, but Valverde's gone, Rodriguez is still here. But currently, we have a massive attack on the road. We've got what is that, like 15 people trying to get away right now? And we do see Garmin Sharp and Rui Costa himself setting the pace in the front right now. They won't allow this huge breakaway to get away, but in the breakaway currently is Eris Capecci from Lotto Bellasol, Ryder Heshedal, Peter Villets, Steph Clement, Nicky Sorensen, Tim Valens, Castavero, Karienka Mayer, and Jeremy Ra. But they all got caught. The Bellaton won't allow that. Do you think if the breakaway is big enough that they can like hold on to the end? It's gonna be a real difficult task in this stage because it's so pancake flat. And I, I I would have given them a chance if if I was like a little hill at the end or something, but um, because it's so flat, I, I don't think they can make it. No, but uh, apparently everybody is going for for it right now. In the peloton, we see Garmin Sharp and Eddie Torres in the pacing. Also, Aluminio is going to the front. They're gonna try to protect Andre Gravel, but it seems like so many teams want to get in the break with the stage. Let's see if they get away. There are echelons appearing right now. The wind is up to 65 right now. Look at how stretched out the peloton is. So, when we have a 9-man group out in the front, echelons will happen. And, Hansball, who would you say has the worst positioning in the peloton? Of the GC riders. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, well, I remember you <laughs> complaining about your own specialist, Roman Bardet, yeah. not being well placed. You said if he had a secret stat called uh, positioning, it'd be around 55. Why? Um... There's just something with Bardan being misplaced, like, he, he's up there at the wrong moment. He's, like, up there in the start of the stage, and at the end of the stage, he's nowhere. Let's see if I can find him right now. Oh, he's sitting nicely towards the front, so he was prepared this time, so you did a good job getting him ready for that, but it seems like the Peloton slowed down. We got a four-man group away, which United Healthcare and Gami Shop can agree to let it go, and in that breakaway, we have Vasil Kiryanka, Bill Kedri, Sil Gutier, and Hezza Zarada. So it's not a strong breakaway, and I don't think they're gonna... Like hold the distance. It's only four people. How many people do you think they would need to hold on a flat stage? It would be quite a lot. Uh, in in a flat stage, you really need like fifteen people who are all pretty damn good in stat and stats in flat. So I I think this break can't hold it. Yeah, I agree. I guess we'll see when it comes to the end. But now we'll have two intermediate sprints, which I don't plan on showing you guys because nothing happens at the intermediate sprints. This is not the Tour de France. And the peloton has split with 30 kilometers to go. We have a 90 man, a 99 man group on the road, and we have an 85 man group on the road. And I can tell you, as well, behind we have names like Tyler Farrar, Warren Bargill, uh, Stibor, Lars Boom, Fabian Cancellara, Heshedal, Jens Fuck, Larsen, Arndt, Philine. So far, I see no GC contenders down here, which are good news. We don't want to see any of the Big Ten getting caught behind, so it does not look like they're caught behind. But as the pace keeps on being uh, up, and we will see more groups happen. So, the, the hands now we're discussing this off camera. We're right now looking at a deficit between, uh, what's his name? Uh, Rui Costa, Rodriguez, and Fangaron. They all have a, one minute between each other. Which of these guys do you think have, has the worst team around them for a flat stage like this? Um, I would say, I, I need to like take my papers out real quick. Uh, I would say that Rodriguez has a decently strong team because he has Taylor Finney to help him in the flat and he has like Gauss and these guys. Uh, Van Garderen has a really strong team in the flat, so I think he will definitely not fall behind. Rui Costa is a little bit of a, of a question for me, but he has Peter Sagan to help him, so that and, should be fine too. And the fact he's got the red jersey just makes it even better. But with 15 kilometers to go at the front, we do see United Healthcare and Garmin Sharp, and the breakaway only has 50 seconds. So the big question is do you think they'll go all the way to the line with 15 kilometers to go? No. 
That's a definitive answer from <laughs> Handspawn. No. Let's see if the prediction holds up. But at the front, we do have Rodriguez. We do have Costa. I don't seem to see Van Garderen anywhere. He's in the Orca Green Edge. Oh, he's actually down here. He's unprotected. And it looks like he's going to be caught in a split, maybe. Actually, no. He's got Brett Lancaster coming up now. It is not good. He's right on a split. It's going to happen right in front of him or right behind him. Let's see if he can get to the front now. It's being really hectic. We'll take a long just to go. we got to keep an eye out for these GC containers. Because with this high of a pace and side win, we could see gaps appearing. But it seems like everybody Everybody slowed down for some reason. No, actually, no. Uh, they're just split up. They can't pace. It's a head-on win at the moment, so nobody can't pace. And with seven kilometers to go, the breakaway still got 40 seconds. I actually want to favor the breakaway for this one. Seven kilometers to go. His is a rider setting the pace in front. 30 seconds. Can he keep it up? Kittle is gonna be damaged from this. I mean, when we see long sprints, hilly sp uh, not hilly sprint, windy sprints, we think of names like Alexander Kristoff, right? So. I yeah. These, these guys who, who um, can, can keep the most power for a long period of time in crosswinds can really win these stages. And speaking about that, Tom Bolton is up here. He's got Sylvain Chavanel and Gary Stigman's leading him out. It's going to be a real close one. The breakaway could go all the way. His is around. has got... No, actually, who's that? Vasil Karienke with two kilometers to go. He's got 20 seconds. Can he keep it up? Here goes Gary Stigman. He's leading out Tom Bolton. Two kilometers to go. He's got grab on his wheel, but there goes Kittle. Can Karienke hold it? No, he points to the line. Kittle is going to take first place. In second place, we're going to have Tom uh, Tom Tornado Bonin and third place is John Degenkopp fourth on a Demar fourth uh, fifth and their Greibel sixth Giacomo uh, Ninsolo how do you say that? Giacomo Ninsolo yeah I can't say that Sasha Madola on <laughs> seventh Peter Sagan for the first time sprinting in eighth Kirienka getting caught so close to the line in ninth place and Bakken Malama in tenth place but there were huge gaps in the end let's see if that affected the podiums Marcel Kittle has been dominating the sprints and once again he takes it, but what do you think about Tom Bowden coming in second place, making an appearance? It, it certainly shows how uh, good positioning and teammates can help, and also his stamina really helped, I think, there. And yeah, and along a long and windy stage like this, it sure did help. Marcel Kittle got a lead up by Bowden, though. He's on his wheel, it just went out in the end. Let's take a look at the GC. So far, I see no changes to the riders in the front. It is still the same time gaps, so I think all the GC contenders were in the front group on this stage. It's good awareness by them, and it's going to be making for some good mountain stages coming up. I do believe we have four to three mountain stages left. Do you know? Uh, yeah, there's, there's still some hilly and mountain stages left, so nothing is decided yet. Oh, and Kittle is taking over the all points jersey. He has gotten three stage wins so far, and he's only got 75 points. So the only points he's gotten towards this jersey has been from sprint victories. And I believe there's like two sprints left, so I would favor Joaquin Rodriguez, Rui Costa, Baka Mama to take this jersey over Kittel. In the Oval Minus jersey, we still have Igor Anton in front of a Claire Pirazzi, but that's most likely going to change hands in the mountains. In the white jersey classification, Roman Bardet and Micah are still tied, but Micah is in the lead of that one. And I know you're pretty happy about not having the white jersey. How come? Um, Bar Bardet will act totally differently um, with his AI. It's pretty stupid AI, I can tell you. So you're happy to not have the white jersey at this exact yes. moment? Yes. Okay. Let's see, overall team classification is on and post chain reaction, but BMC Racing is 17 seconds behind, and MTM Quebec is one minute behind. That one is changing hands every day. But guys, thank you guys for watching this episode of uh, MLC Walter Espana. Please leave a like, please leave a comment, please go to Handsball's channel, it's, ha it's uh, youtube.com slash handsball1. Thank you guys, thank you for being on your Handsball, and I'll no see problem. you guys later.